if it actually continued about your feelings of isolation as they were generated by the reality of the fact that you were are biracial and are bicultural, I suppose even though over time you might <coughs> feel more one than the other. Right. Just I would think that would be a lingering um, feeling regardless. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that sense of uh, What, what I discovered, and, and I try to write about this in the book, is that I guess that the solution for me to that sense of isolation was to throw myself into a community, uh, to basically uh, decide, and I, it wasn't articulated in my mind at the time, but in retrospect I can see what I was doing. Um, I ended up... Uh, deciding that my individual fate had to be tied to something larger than myself. Uh, that uh, my individual salvation would only come from a collective salvation of some sort. Uh, that my true sense of self would only come if I had some sense of community. And so uh, what I internally, I think, did was to uh, sort of reach back into uh, that period of time that, that my parents came together, the civil rights movement. And I, I think I internalized a sense uh, that this country had, that this nation had in the early 60s, that we could transform community, that we could break isolation. Uh, I think part of the impulse for my parents marrying each other, you've got a, a white woman from a, a lower middle class background in, in a small starched you know, uh, town in, in Kansas, now she marries an African. Well, something's going on there. I mean, part of what's going on, and she's you know the, the, the most wonderful woman I know. And and part of what was going on with her was she's trying to break out of the isolation and stultification and and uh, constraints of her upbringing. My father, on the other hand, he's trying to break out of his own sense of isolation. He is a transitional figure, someone who's moving essentially from the 18th century directly into the 21st, out of a small Kenyan village into you know, uh, a Harvard PhD program, uh, you know, in one fell swoop. So he's suddenly recognizing that uh, his life uh, is isolated, that there's this modern world that's swirling about him and that he's got to take control of that in some fashion. And so I think part of the impulse that brought them together had to do with breaking their isolation. I think this nation was going through some, the same sense when Freedom Riders went down uh, from the north to, to uh, register voters and break down segregation in the south. That's an exercise in breaking through isolation. Uh, and so I think that subconsciously at least, I ended up hearkening back to that time and, and became a community organizer. And what I discovered through the work that I did in Chicago uh, was that uh, um, by sharing stories, as I said, by um, understanding that the experiences of my grandfather in Kansas, uh, who, you know, sort of had an unsavory past and his father left him and uh, uh, left his mother, his mother ended up committing suicide. He was always sort of, you know, I guess what might be considered poor, white trash. Um, you know, that, that his story, his needs, his hungers, weren't that different from a young man that I'm looking at, an 18-year-old in Chicago, whose father's left him, and whose mother's maybe uh, smoking crack, and he's trying to make his way, and I'm working with him. Uh, once you start seeing those stories and, and, and digging beneath the, the surface, uh, then you can reclaim a connection. And, and I guess one of the things that, that uh, I think that translates to politically is, is a sense that if we work through these, racial harmony is not gonna come by us holding hands and singing kumbaya. Uh, that uh, understanding has to be earned. It has to be worked for. And there are sacrifices involved. Uh, and I think that breaking isolation requires work and sacrifice. If you want to see an awesome clip of a young Jordan Peterson, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I'm not interested in social conflict. 
from the perspective of a political scientist or a sociologist. I'm interested in intergroup conflict, but not at the level of group analysis. I'm interested in 